Okay, so we're gonna start taking apart this carburetor. First thing to do is get it off the car. And you can see I already moved the heater hose outside from the choke housing here, moved it outside. Gotta take the fuel line off. Gotta take the kick down linkage here for the transmission off, the kick down rod. The throttle cable, this just rolls off. You twist it off. For this one, there's a little clip you can see right there. Gotta take off. Then there's the choke heater down there. That's usually a half inch. You can use an open-ended wrench there. Take these vacuum lines off. And then it's four nuts just around the body of the carburetor. It's pretty easy. There's not much to it. And the throttle cable is you can do it with one hand. You just kind of probably can't. No, I'm not going to be able to. This linkage is sometimes a little tricky. Not the linkage, but this little clip is sometimes a little tricky. But, you know, you got to play around. You got to kind of push in and push down and get it off. But you'll get it. There's a little tang on there that you have to get out of the way. Overall, this is pretty easy. Best advice is take a bunch of pictures. And that way, if you screw something up, you have a reference of what it looked like. And these two barrels are, like I said, pretty easy. So I'm going to start taking these different pieces off. We'll get it off. We'll pull the carburetor apart. All right. So here we are. Got all of the nuts off. Those aren't too bad. This one's a little tricky just because this accelerator pump linkage is in the way. But if you get a thin... 716 socket like this on a quarter inch drive you're going to be fine all the nuts are 716 the choke heater is half an inch and then the vacuum hoses are just the vacuum hoses that's about it like i said this accelerator cable rolls off you'll have to remove the return spring right there disconnect it i've left it there on the position where it was at this is for adjustable accelerator pedal tension you can move the spring further back at each of these little steps if you want more tension and that's it it's ready to pop off so it should be loose now yep i can take it off and there we are we're free and you always want to put a, a cloth over this and the other thing I'll say is we're going to put a new gasket on here. It's gasket, spacer, gasket, and then the intake. But you want to just check to see if you see any breaks or gaps in the gasket that might be a clue to if you were having a drivability issue, uh, what was happening. And this now just lifts off. This is a phenolic spacer underneath here that will lift off. Or actually, yeah, somebody's put a metal spacer under here. Maybe that's stock. So in any event, there's a spacer between the intake. Later ones on the four barrels have a phenolic spacer. This one looks different. But there's the carburetor. So we're gonna fix the accelerator pump. We'll take the top off. The top is just this screw, this screw, this screw, and that screw. And that's it, I believe. I haven't rebuilt one of these two barrels in a little bit, but they're wonderfully simple. And the power valve, we're going to put a new power valve on, comes with the kit. It's on the bottom on the underside right here, so we'll have to flip it upside down and do that. But again, put a cloth over top of the intake so nothing gets in the engine, and then you're good to go. You basically just take, this is usually 3 8 take this, spin it out, undo those screws, and the top of the carburetor comes off. Then you can check the float and the needle and seat and put new ones in that come with your carburetor kit as well. We'll keep going. Well, there you go. So here's gasket, spacer, gasket to the intake. This is just connected to the PCV, no reason to unhook it. But I will say you always wanna just check the gaskets. They look old, but they look like they're not torn on this. So that's good. And before you replace these with new gaskets, you need to make sure they match up. Can't tell you how many times the carburetor kits now don't have the correct gaskets and you may have to get separate ones. So I always double check and be super careful trying to remove the old gaskets in case I have to reuse them because sometimes it's days to get a part now, unfortunately, for one of these cars and I may have to reuse it, which, you know, 
used to be I was a big fan of doing everything right and doing replacing everything while I was in here. Now I try to replace as little as possible, to be honest, because the parts quality isn't great and it's hard to get parts. So, you know, these gaskets actually, they're old, but they look to be in good shape. If my carburetor kit doesn't work and I can't get new gaskets easily, I'll just reuse these. You'll see sometimes breaks or tears in them and that would get vacuum leaks or cause vacuum leaks. You really, you absolutely don't want that. You're gonna have drivability problems, but these look like they're sealing just fine. Problem on this carburetor is a dead accelerator pump, which somebody's tried to compensate with by moving the choke rich. Should actually be lined up with that or even maybe a notch lean. And the power valve I think is stuck as well. Because when I accelerate, it feels pretty rich at idle and it doesn't feel rich enough. It feels lean as I step into it more and more, which suggests the power valve is probably stuck in place. So we'll keep going. And four screws later and this threaded item for the air cleaner, which actually was a half inch in this car, not three eighths. The four barrels I recall are three eighths. And the air horn is off. There it is. You can see inside the carburetor here, there's the float. This is just the accelerator pump vent. There's the float that moves up and down with the gas. There's the needle and seat. To get that out, you see this little clip here. You just pry the clip out of the way and the float and the needle come out with it. So we'll check that. I don't see too much crud in here. You can also, if you want on your, if you've got a Ford, particularly one from the mid seventies, You'll see there's two jets in there. You can take those out with a big screwdriver and those jets will be numbered. And then what I recommend is if you've got a mid-70s Ford, these are jetted very lean, go up about four numbers in jet size, order them online, you can get them on eBay, put them in and your car will run a lot better. These late 60s ones are generally just fine. So we'll continue on. Okay, so we've taken out the needle and seat in the float. So you can see the two jets in the bottom there. And the middle portion is what relates to the power valve. And I can tell you it's stuck on this carburetor. So you flip this over, you see those four screws, take that off. That's where the power valve is. And you're gonna need an adjustable wrench or a big wrench to get it out. The needle and seat actually look fine on this. I don't know if somebody took this apart and put a new one in and didn't touch the power valve, but the accelerator pump definitely needs to be replaced on this. So my guess is maybe they just put a new needle and seat and didn't touch the accelerator pump or the power valve. So we'll continue on the next step, taking those four screws off. Okay, so we've taken the four screws off and you can see the power valve right there. You need an adjustable wrench to get it off. Also taken the two idle screws out on the left and right. And first thing you want to do is screw them in to see how many turns out they are. In this case, these were both three turns out on both the driver and passenger side. So I'll make note of that and I can start with that when I restart the car and adjust from there. You also don't want to screw them in super tight, just kind of screw them until they're seated, otherwise you'll damage them. And there they are along with the power valve cover and the gasket. So now for an adjustable wrench, to get this power valve out of here. This one actually looks relatively new, but it is sticky, so interesting. Well, we'll keep going. Okay, so got the power valve out. The left one is the old one, and the right one is the new one. And in spite of it looking new on this side and not having any issues, you can see it's green and nasty on this side. And, if you go to push the new one, watch here. See how it moves freely? It doesn't have all that much travel, but it moves very freely. Now watch this one. It's barely moving at all. And see how it's taking time and it's springing back after I let go? This one, I can't, can't really do that with this one. It's stuck. So this is a big problem. If that is stuck like that, you're not gonna get the appropriate richening of the mixture. 
as you step into the throttle. So definite problem. First thing you can tell is just visual inspection. Always start with your diagnosis looking with a visual inspection. And when you see green, that means corrosion. And in spite of the underside looking good, like I said, this is not, I mean, I can't, see, I can't do the same thing. I can't push it up and down rapidly. Does here doesn't make a noise versus this. So this is what it should look like. This is what this one looks like. So problem number one on this carburetor, bad power valve. Next problem will be a bad accelerator pump diaphragm too. We get both of these fixed, this thing's gonna run like a million bucks. Stay tuned as we continue the rebuild. And you can see there's the underside. We'll clean out all these passages in here. It's all green and nasty, so they're probably clogged. Ideally, you wanna take this whole thing apart and put it in a dip bucket, but I don't have a dip bucket. And to be honest, I found I don't need one. If I clean these passages really well, nine times out of 10, it works just fine. So we'll get back at it. But it's always great when you have a symptom. A symptom I had when I was driving this car is when I'd step on it, the car would accelerate uh, or bog on acceleration. And then on top of that, as I tipped in further to the throttle, it just felt like it was lean. And after experience, you'll know when a car is leaning out, you'll just see that there's just not the power that there should be, and you won't see any black smoke coming out of the tailpipe, so it's not running rich, it's running too lean, and you won't smell, you know, the exhaust won't smell rich. So this was clearly lean. And then my instant diagnosis was, well, I can also see from a visual inspection, the fuel pump on this car is quite new. So, can't really see it down there, but trust me when I say that the fuel pump is new. So fuel pump new, somebody thought that the fuel pump was going bad, and that's why it was bogging on acceleration. So we misdiagnosed it. The issue is the stuck accelerator pump diaphragm is causing the bog, and you also have the stuck power valve, which is not allowing the mixture to rich the mixture to richen. This is really bad. It's not even moving when I do that. So, it always feels great, like I said, when you kind of have a hypothesis about a diagnosis and you pull this apart and you can see it's definitely bad. You know by putting in the new part, it's going to run much better. I hope you enjoyed part one of this rebuilding the Motorcraft or Autolite 2100 carburetor. Stay tuned for part two. And until then, check out the video thumbnails at bottom left and right for some suggestions for you.